welcome to a special edition of All Things Covered, coming from a disclosed location in Mexico with my former teammates and my friends and their wives. Um, we just here to chop it up a little bit, talk about some life, some football, you know, whatever it may be. You got the, the NCAA just approved likeness for, for guys in, in, in college football. So we got a lot to talk about. To my right, I'm sorry, to my left, we got my man JP, uh, a former eight year NFL vet, uh, played with the Colts, played with Baltimore Ravens, played with me in Arizona. You got my brother from Florida, from, uh, from Florida, Josh Bynes, a 10 year vet, um, played with Cincinnati, Arizona, uh, Detroit Lions, Baltimore Ravens, Super Bowl champ with Baltimore Ravens. I got my guys here, man. You guys enjoying vacation so far? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure, for sure. For I'm sure. still time. No. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, JP, we're going to start with you. All right. Tell me one of your early football stories in high school. High school football story. All right. Uh, for me, I kind of got my career jumped off. So my sophomore year, uh, I ended up earning a starting spot on varsity, and we to open up the game was playing a team called Athens High School. Phillip Rivers actually went to that high school, mm -hmm. but they had a running back named Jason Jude, and he was a four-star, five-star, went to Mississippi State, and uh, no lie, like third player of the game, smacked him, caught him, caught him on a toss crack, and uh, smacked him. He fumbled the ball right in my hand, and I took it for a 60-yard touchdown, and this is <laughs> the start of my career. So right, right. after that game, I kind of put, I guess, people on notice. So. Mm -hmm. Going into my junior senior year, people people knew who I was right. after, after that one game. So that's how my high school career jumped off. Hey, and I had the opportunity to play with Gerard in Arizona. Probably the most humble teammate I've ever had. The most he's the most humble and the most serious teammate I ever had. By, <laughs> I just look <laughs> serious. I just look serious. I just look serious. Hey, I, I think it might be a cancer thing. Um, but Josh, we're gonna move over to you. We're not gonna actually talk about what got you started in football. What are you scared of? Hey, yo. <laughs> me, <laughs> yo. <laughs> me, it's like, it's heights, it's fighters. I don't really know what order they come in sometimes, because whatever comes at that moment, it just, that's the number one at right. times. <laughs> so I don't do heights, and I don't do spiders, but you know, thanks to you, I'm trying to get through those things, uh -huh. you know, especially with heights, yo. Spiders, that's gonna be that forever, but heights, I'm trying to conquer that part of it. All right, yeah, that was, that was just a little <laughs> monkey wrench in there, but I do gotta ask you about that magical season that you guys had in 2012. What was the turning point for that season? Um, the turning point, I would say, was Ray Rice, when we was in San Diego, um, we was down, it was like fourth and like 29. It was some crazy number. I remember that. Oh man, and it was like, all right, we was like, dang, it's, it's gonna be hard. But Anquan Bowden put a block on somebody. Ray Rice got that check down and got it right at the 29, 20, whatever it was, 30 yards, whatever it was. And, and just from that point forward, I think we ended up turning the game around winning it. And that season just turned into something magical. We knew from that, at that point on, like we can conquer adversity. All we need to do is win that one game at a time and then went to playoffs and, you know, it all rolled, you know. Yeah, man. Well, I'm sitting here with two. Did you win the championship? No, I went. I lost. You went. Yeah, okay. My rookie year. So play play Saints. All right. So I'm playing with two guys that actually had an opportunity to play in the big game. I'm still waiting for that opportunity. But what's some of the challenges, back to JP, what are some of the challenges that you face um, coming into the league, leaving college, and obviously, because that year when you guys won the championship, that was your second year in the league, no, right? That was my rookie year. Rookie year. Yeah, so what's some, what some? What was some of the challenges? What's the, some of the, the, I guess, the pros and cons versus college and football? Uh, well, pros. you know, like coming from where we came from, SEC, we used to always just feel like it don't get no better than that, right. talent-wise. So when I first got into the league, I wasn't really, I guess, worried about competition just because I'm like, you're going against Julio every Saturday. You're going against AJ Green, Percy oh. Harvin. It ain't too many guys out there that you just gonna say is better than them. So right. running to the league, I was just more so like, man, let me get my mental thing right so I can just fly around and make plays. But I'll say the biggest challenge was just going back to college again. You know how you might line up against certain people and you just know you're gonna win that matchup. Oh, right. There ain't oh, yeah. nothing they can do in college. Like you just know. In pros, you'll get humbled real quick. <laughs> you know, a guy coming off the street trying to earn a living just as good as anybody else just don't got the opportunity. So I, I would say that rookie year, uh, which I had a good rookie year started and everything, had a good rookie year, but just seeing guy after guy after guy, and I'm like, damn, everybody's good. Right. That was something I had to get used to, like not taking a playoff, not relaxing, uh, you know, just, just taking it for what it was and not just thinking my talent was going to win. 
right. know, win my matchups. True. Yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely, uh, we can we can vouch with you on that one for sure. We all three got something in common. We all had opportunity to play with Arizona Cardinals, with mm -hmm. the Arizona Cardinals. So I'm, I'm gonna go with Josh on this one. Do you have any funny stories or a story that you may want to share with us oh, that, man. you know, we may not heard before or we may not, Arizona? you know, seen? <laughs> You got any fun oh no, I gotta think, man. I ain't. I gotta go back in archives right now. How, how was Coach Foot? How was Coach uh, Foot? Foot was so cool, man. Down the Foot was a, actually uh, <laughs> a player too. Uh, 2013. Yeah. He was a player. Yep. He played with us in 2013. But Foot also was a, a guest on the All Things Covered show. So <laughs> he will be watching. <laughs> Give us a good Foot story, man. Foot is just funny, man. Like just, we'll be in the meeting rooms, right? And Foot, uh, he'll be like, "Hey, Josh, this is linebacker Foot. This is me talking." Good play, Josh. That's how you go out there and play. Then you don't do the thing. All right, Josh, I got back to coach. All right, Josh. Uh, <laughs> That's for you got to You got to fit this like this. You know? Right. I, I, okay. <laughs> Good. I, that's good, yo. That's good how he get to you, though. Know? Right. I respect that, though. <laughs> hey, that is definitely Coach Foot. We got a bunch of cool stories with Coach Foot. Like we said, we, well, actually, Josh didn't play one of the, but me and Gerard had an opportunity to play with Coach Foot. A phenomenal athlete, phenomenal yeah. storyteller, and also you can't tell him nothing about when uh, who was the guy that got the hundred points? Uh, what? Yeah, uh, Chamber. Whip Chamber. Mm, Whip, yeah, Whip yeah, Chamber. Yeah, Chamber. You can't tell Foot nothing about what Chamber scoring hundred points because he don't believe it. He said it wasn't no tape. It wasn't no tape. No TV. Shout out to Coach Foot. <laughs> well, <laughs> yo, well, yo. <laughs> So we gonna switch. Up, though, exactly right. Right. <laughs> we gonna switch gears a little bit. I want the guy. I want both perspectives. What are the perks between college and the pros? I would say the perks is just if once you realize that you yourself is a business, if you realize that early enough in college, it transitioned in pro. You know, I, I talk about Ty all the time. Mm -hmm. I know Ty wasn't really thinking about his brand, but if you look at how his brand was built, how your brand was built in college to where y'all had a name for y'all selves, going into the uh, pros, it ain't like somebody had to start from the bottom up to build y'all up. They right. had to just take off or whatever y'all just stopped with and take it to another level. Mm -hmm. So I'll say if, the, if guys that's coming into the league now or guys that got aspirations that's in uh, college now, especially with this likeness thing going, build your brand, build your brand, because once you do get in the NFL, it is a million different opportunities and uh, different things that you can kind of dip and dab in to find out whatever your niche is, but it's gonna be some opportunity. And if your brand ain't where it needs to be, some opportunities might fade. So you always see the guys that got some type of brand getting the opportunities that obviously they deserve and more. Then you see the guys that might not have a brand want them opportunities and don't realize like shoot why i can't get this why i can't right. get that you ain't got a brand to sell but it's so, a business at the end of the but day but it's also opportunities though you know what i mean mm -hmm. you know i was undrafted so necessarily didn't have that going into the league but then as far as like as you as build you your resume you know, up you know, you know what yeah, i mean and you yeah. started building that like okay what are you known for what is your your niche, niche and yeah. stuff like that and you yeah. start to keep going with that because that's what teams know you for how you how you've been around so long mm -hmm. and stuff like that so you got opportunity to still build your brand from the ground. Up. Like my guy, uh, Brandon Copeland, he was undrafted as well. And he does super amazing stuff around the league with guys, former players and current players with uh, opportunities beyond football. He's also doing, he's a professor a professor at Penn, where he uh, went to school at. And uh, he does a, a bunch of stuff. But Life 101, I believe, is on Instagram as well. And a bunch of opportunities trying to give guys different avenues of, you know, try to, you know, whatever, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Crypto, real estate, whatever the brand is, whatever you want to jump in, having us access to that uh, venture capital and stuff like that. He's been really good at doing that. He's built this brand up tremendously. And, you know, he's done that. So here's my thing, dude. Do you think that at some point there will be a divider in the locker room, though? So we'll go back, you know, when I was in school, um, you know, who, who was all on my team? Like we had me, Tyron, George Jefferson, um, Boris Claiborne. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm a junior. You know, I won all the the, all the, uh, the the awards and things like that. So I'm going to receive more money. Do you think that Demi's the life on other players? 
I, I don't necessarily just because your value ain't what it need, what it's, where it's at yet, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, like, yeah. It's a reason why you won them accolades mm -hmm. and did all that type of stuff. So I think guys, as other guys that might be in the locker room, it'll give them a go, like, all right, I need to go out here and do what I, th do what I gotta do. Because at the end of the day, if, if your product, if the play ain't where it needs to be, you know, people yeah. ain't go try right. to get nothing from you anyway. So I, I feel like that, uh, especially like I said, with this likeness and all this stuff going on, all this money that's about to be floating around. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of kids are forgetting they still gonna have to put in the work mm -hmm. and show what they can do on the field to get that. I know it's gonna be some kids is that, that all players get right. same deals and all that, but the big ones, obviously, like you see now, we see the big name players in college getting the bigger deals at right. the moment right now. So I still think it's one of them things that's just gonna revert back. Like, man, I gotta go out here and ball. I'm trying to right. get this deal. Yeah, <laughs> it's like we play in Florida on yeah. national TV. I'm gonna ball. I'm gonna yeah. celebrate. I'm gonna make a name for myself because I know when I get done, my phone gonna be ringing. Right. Yeah. You know, so I think that's what's gonna go into the game. So you you might see a bunch of kids playing a lot harder, doing a, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that college football kids don't play hard. Of course they do. But we might just see a different style of football. Oh, excuse me. A different style of football where guys is really out there trying to get it. Because like, right. everybody can't make it to the NFL. No, so right. a lot of no. guys might look at this like, shoot, let me go and cash out before this graduation <laughs> comes on. <home." laughs> <laughs> so, so do you think, as far as, like, like you said, guys cashing out, guys, you know, making – the, the 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 best of their opportunity. Do you think that kind of hamper their skill set when they get to the league because they're already experiencing it now? Um, I mean, it's kind of it's so so, you know, because you know we've been in the league, you know, uh, this long, and you've seen the transition from when we were, you know, when we first came right. into where it is now. These young players, the the under the, the the game like it's changed. Right. They're not taking the game as serious. Not, I want to say serious. From the mental it's standpoint. just from the mental yeah. standpoint. Like the game is the game. Mm -hmm. You know, it hasn't changed, but it's hard putting in the work. Yeah. What is really like every Sunday, like every day. As soon as you're done with Sunday, Monday, it's like I'm still. I watch our game, but it's back to the next team. Right. Tuesday, next team. It's all the way through hell. If I got a four o'clock or nine o'clock, whatever game that eight o'clock game that Sunday night. I'm still studying, like, I might watch game two, game three, you know, seeing stuff, you know, studying to the last minute. So, at Sunday, it's like, you know, clockwork. Right. And that hasn't been a thing as, you know, being in the league as long as we have now. It's like guys haven't put in that I together think, lately. You I know think what another I mean? thing is, too, a lot of guys, especially the guys that's coming from these big-time programs, I mean, they, they you, you can basically say they've been a professional right. you know, the last four years. I mean, guys coming in, they already driving the latest – Cars, we cars, had that. We, I ain't even had a car. So you get, you, get a lot of guys, yeah, you get a lot of guys that's already in that professional mindset just because of the business of college football yeah. now. Yeah, so exactly. I can see them coming into the league not really, I guess, toned in like they should, should be because yeah. they've gotten so much already. They yeah, think it's that. still going to, you know, continue to flow. Yeah. Right. That's when you had a rude awakening. Yeah. No, that's true. <laughs> that's true, though. Because at the end there. of the day, when they when these when these kids go through likeness, now they have to learn, you know, to be an adult early mm -hmm. as far right. as yes. yeah, their taxes, all that. As far as you know, uh, W nines, all yeah. that stuff. Financial literacy, yeah. exactly. You know, Financial literacy, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and having a bunch yeah. of money that they've never had. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So how do you know? I just want to make it. You know, obviously, I'm I'm happy that the NCAA is oh, finally yeah. made this happen. Yeah. But I want to make sure it's not to where, all right, we got a five-star recruit. He's making, you know, a million dollars. Mm -hmm. But then another guy who who might just slip up in the first right, round, right, right, but he's right. only making fifty thousand. He right. might be looking at him some type of way. You know what I mean? I think that can, you know, create some type of dividing divider factor in the locker room. But you know, it is what it is, and um, you know, discussion is going to continue to to rise uh, throughout this likeness that the, NF, uh, the NCAA just uh, uh, approved. But before I let my guys go, I'm in between of two war eagles. Yes. They're not war tigers. Eagles. Damn right. They don't, first war of all, they don't, God, tigers. Hey, yo. they don't know we're tigers. <laughs> We they don't tigers. know what tiger they is. They tigers are eagles. Bayou Bayou they don't know the Bayou 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 Bayou
we actually had an opportunity to go down to Auburn and play those guys. Uh, I can't remember. It's like week four, week five. It was, early. Early. Yeah. it was a night game, and it was the first time LSU has beaten Auburn since the bonfire. Yeah. JP, give us some great memories of that game. Oh, man, we had y'all beat like we do every year. Last, <laughs> last, last, last minute of the game, uh, they put together a drive and won like 40 seconds. Uh, my boy, so, uh, yeah. Brandon LaFell got, got that touchdown. Got the yeah. touchdown. Um, and uh, the guy that was covering him at that time was Zach, who's actually the secondary coach. Yeah, all yeah. really crazy. Yeah. Shit. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, just them battles with LSU. I mean, that year before, I had the, the infamous moment of the last second touchdown where Bird true. caught my whole body, arm, and everything. <laughs> Hell of a play. Had a damn great game, too. Yeah, that play yeah. Yeah. Yeah, everything. Yeah, but, um, I was at that game on my road trip. I already know. I already know what yeah. I told you. <laughs> No, but uh, just playing LSU in them days, like I said, I remember Pat. Um, Pat was second string when we played Auburn at 07. I mean, when they when LSU came to Auburn in 08, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the starter for LSU was having a long day, and Pat came in and never looked back at me. So I always <laughs> tell people, I always tell people, I was True part story. of that <laughs> journey, like starting off and all of that. So uh, I mean, it's just it's just good to see how everything kind of played out when you yeah. get back on. I mean, yeah. that was 15, 16 years ago. Right, a long, long time ago. We're not aging ourselves. But, Josh, yeah. what's your greatest LSU-Auburn moment? You know, it got to be that last year, you know, went to the Natty, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, B2. I'm oh, sorry. Hey, that was a hell of a game, Yeah, still, man, bro. that game was good. That was a hell of a game, That game was good, bro. Oh, man. Auburn. Oh, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah. 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 You know, B2, electric fast. I was like, like damn. damn. We don't know about it. That, that was it, though. You know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, bro. Man, was so I'm good. still oh, upset that they talking about Cam drug me. First of all, this guy is 260. Yeah, 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 Running this way full no, speed. He was and I got to like, jump on him. I'm dude, like, how did he drag me? Oh, I, I got him down on the ground, but obviously it was too late. They scored. But, you know, it is what it is. But I will say this. That was probably the liveest game we played in all oh, yeah. year. Because oh. Alabama came to us. That was a live game, but far as on the road. When we when we went there, it was a 3 o'clock game. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you got – I don't I don't think the the Home Depot crew was there, but it should, they should have been there. Oh, the man, that game was, was, was crazy. It, it, I'm not I don't sure. Remember, but that game was – Well, I just know what? one thing. Yes, game. I'm yes. Oh, watching. yeah. Yes, that game was probably one of the better games that I've been involved in as far as the back and forth, the tug of war, you know, they yeah. scored, we scored, the atmosphere, oh, man. just everything. It was, so it was, it was, just, a, game, it was just an incredible game. Oh. Um, my last question for the both of you guys before we go. Again, we were all things covered with uh, Gerard Powers and Josh Bynes. What is your – and we're going to start with Gerard on this one. What is your greatest – NFL moment. My greatest NFL moment. Uh, you know, after so 2012, we're in Indy. Chuck Pagano's our coach. Yeah. Chuck had got sick. That was the year he got the cancer. He got he got cancer. So BA took over. And BA took over. Mm -hmm. And uh, we was playing the Packers. And Chuck had just like I guess got the call that he would be able to like get out of the hospital. Right. But they waited to tell us after this Packers game. So mm -hmm. during the game, didn't nobody know. And uh, Aaron Rodgers was lighting us up. This young Aaron <laughs> Rodgers was lighting us up. We was down like 17 and a half. We come back out. Uh, I ended up getting a pick to start the start the third quarter. And uh, Andrew Love, Reg, Reggie went for like 200. Him and Charles Wilson. He went for 200 on Charles Wilson, but Charles made at least 10, 11 plays. It was like right. one of yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, what the hell is going on? He's <laughs> like, all papers are putting on the show. But uh, just going back to the moment, after we came back and won the game, my oldest son, Cam, was maybe six months at the time, one of his first games he came to. And I was able to bring him on the field. Like, the, this is one of them games we all rushed the field and all right. of that. So my wife was able to bring him down. And I grabbed him, and I got pictures of it and everything. But we just sitting on the field, walking around, mm -hmm. and doing all that type of stuff. And I, and I, I think right there it kind of hit me like, boy, you a daddy out here. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was like, real that was my first child. <laughs> I was like, God, dude, you a daddy out here. <laughs> so it was just a proud moment to do because yeah. you envision stuff like that. Right. You know, like yeah. that when I have kids, I want my kids around. And right. Yeah. So it was, it was a good moment. And before we get to Josh real quick, speaking of Cam, that's my guy right there. Killer Cam. <laughs> P2 athlete. Man. <laughs>
So that <laughs> is my guy right there. Give us a little insight on what Cam got going on right now. Like, man, we just got done with AAU basketball. He had a good season playing up, and then uh, we're getting ready for his first year. He's a, he's going into the fourth grade, and he's playing up. We're going our first year at tackle, so he's all excited. Been watching all his YouTube videos, getting his swag right. Told him what time he got a dark visor. Right. Oh, he got a dark visor. Oh, he, no. he asking for the socks that you can uh kind of the house lights, uh, the, the stretch, stretch yeah. the stretchy socks. Okay. Like so, he getting right. So, uh, but Cam, I mean, he's a tremendous, you know, just tremendous kid. Great big brother. Mm -hmm. No problems down to earth. Yeah. Uh, you know, just just a lot of fun. Man. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Gerard is a, a all boys dad. Three boys. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Josh is an all boys dad. And I'm, I'm here in the middle as an all girl. Like Kobe. Shout out to Kobe, RP Kobe, girl dad. So, Josh, what is your uh, greatest NFL moment? My greatest NFL moment has to be uh, the Super Bowl. Okay. I ended up uh, making the final tackle in the Super Bowl to win the game. Mm. Hell yeah. So, uh, we was on kickoff. We had did the punt, you know, in the end zone, did the safety, yeah, right. we did the safety. Yeah. I was on punt team, then I got trampled over. I grabbed two or three people, I was trying to hold everybody. Okay. I was trying to, and I was on the ground, hold the leg. I was like, hey, let nobody go get right. up on them, trying to get the timeout. Yeah. And of course, you know, you had to do the safety punt, and I meet Ted again, that's going. Boom. That's why I miss yeah. everybody. And I'm I'm at R3. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he was, hey, you know, Tim was fast, yo. Man, yeah. man I'm running towards that sideline. Man, I wrapped him up. I think he even got a call from him, but I don't think that matters. I got him mm -hmm. down. We won the Super Bowl. And like you said, man, having that moment where my wife and Josh was probably three at the time. And that it was a 13. Yeah, so he was born at 10. So he was three at the time. We were on the field taking pictures and Living that moment, he making snow angels. I'm like that whole moment was like, yeah. you know, it's like crazy. Like you know, I'm in the league, and this is my second yeah. year, I won a Super sure. Bowl after yeah. winning national championship. It was just surreal moment. You can't, it's picture perfect. Like too many people can say that. Man. Like, Indiana, in a yeah, Super Bowl. that's few no, people. Yeah, only a few people can definitely say that, man. Well, I like to thank my guys. Like I said, Gerard Powers, Josh Bynes for coming for a roundtable talk, real quick for a special episode on all things covered at a disclosed location. <laughs> See you soon. Peace.